Greetings friends, welcome. Today we're looking at how to use Tailwind in a Next.js application. Should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we can use it as a post-CSS plugin, um, so we don't need to be messing around with any NPM scripts. Uh, before we do, if you find yourself enjoying the video, feel free to click that subscribe below. Uh, but let's jump in, let's create a Next.js uh, application. We'll call it Tailwind CSS. Uh, this should get created pretty quick. All good. All right, let's uh, let's go into there. And what do we need for Tailwind? We need to install um, Tailwind CSS, but we also want the post CSS file and auto refixer, and we want those in-depth dependencies. Now, once those are installed, we can we can create the Tailwind config map through running Tailwind CSS with um, init, uh, we, need to, we wanna, in this case, we wanna say minus P, because that will create the post CSS config as well. All right, so it says it's done both of those. Let's jump in and have a look. All uh, right, so what have we got down here? We've got a Tailwind config. That's nicely set up. We do need to add in manually ourselves where the source files are. We can do that now, actually. So for this, we would want everything in pages and all subfolders in there as well. And we're going to want JS, TS, TSX, and JSX. Um, and then we also want to check in components. That's going to be JS, TS. Oops. TX, JSX, and TSX as well. All right, so I think we're good on the config there. Um, so any uh, typo, double typo. Um, so any Tailwind classes that we find, well, that Tailwind finds in these places will should be um, available to us. Uh, where's the post CS? Okay, so this, this was created as well when we, we ran the Tailwind CSS in it, and it set up that with Tailwind for us. So that should, when we do an NPM run dev, or yarn dev in this case, um, it should automatically update our Tailwind styles. Now, one other thing we need to do, which is standard for Tailwind, is we need to specify which parts of Tailwind are we gonna be using. Um, and we're gonna say the base, Components and uh, utilities. So, so that's pretty standard. And in here, quite often, if you're doing your own project, you'd have that in, in a standalone file. But we can place that into global CSS here. Um, that should be good. All right, let's try running this up. We can do yarn dev. And we should be able to get to this on 3000. So, yeah, okay, that looks good. Uh, so we'll try and update this to use uh, Tailwind. So if we come into pages, index, and there's our welcome bit. So we'd no longer be using um, these uh, these imports, this CSS modules. We would scrap that, um, and we would now be using Tailwind. So we could do large text, um, and let's set it to red now, it's just so we can see the difference. So what have we got currently? Uh, currently, it's blue in there. Uh, oops. Okay, kind of it's blue in there. If I save this off and then come back, now we've got the red update in there. Uh, we, you know, you can change the size of this background. So, okay, so Tailwind classes are working in there, and that's, we've got a hot refresh, hot reload. Um, any changes are getting automatically updated there for us. So pretty easy, yeah, just install Tailwind, post CSS, and auto prefixer, uh, run Tailwind CSX with MPX, um, passing init to minus P, 
um, and then come into the config, Tailwind config, and specify where Tailwind should look um, to to find its class, its um, its CSS being used, its utility classes. Uh, nothing to do in post CSS. And then the only other thing we had to do was in styles, we needed to import these three guys here. All right, I hope that was interesting. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, thumbs down if not. Uh, but thanks for watching. Catch you next time.